That feels better. One more. Ah, that got it going good. Right guys, today we are here with Gavin Gear from Ultimate Reloader. We have just wrapped up your first Africa hunt. Amazing. Really. Amazing. So, I painted a pretty, I think, uh, illustrious picture of what hunting in South Africa was like and what the whole experiences were going to be like with the food and the value for money and all things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you feel now, last day here in South Africa basically? Like, did I oversell it or? No, no, not at all. Uh, the experience from landing here, vacationing to get over the jet lag for a few days and then coming to the camp was absolutely amazing. And to see the animals was, I mean, I felt like I was in one of your videos, one of your hunting videos. And this is all very exotic to me. Mm -hmm. And my goal with this trip was just come and experience it, right? A lot of guys will think ahead for years, they'll research all the animals, they'll get all hyped up, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to come here and just immerse myself into the experience and, and, and do it. And it was just, it exceeded my expectations. Yeah. yeah. So we won't be doing any spoilers for you guys with what Gavin hunted. <laughs> um, if you want to see that, I basically played cameraman for the last, <laughs> you know, four or five days. And I thoroughly enjoyed that. It was almost better than hunting mm -hmm. myself. A different mm -hmm. kind of pressure to make sure you also get the shot, but a different kind of shot. You, on the other hand, executed flawlessly. Because it's always like people doubt, like, can those guys really shoot? Because, you know, we make YouTube videos and we could just shoot infinite groups until we have a good group to show. Right. But let me tell you guys something. Every single shot Gavin shot was absolutely on the money. Um, it was freaking awesome. Now, we were shooting my rifle called Sam behind me. <laughs> Because uh, she's a short action monster, that's why she's called nice. Sam. Yeah. Nice. 6.5 Sherman Mag, MDT LSS. We did a complete separate updated video for you guys on this rifle. That uh, video is going to also air on your channel, mm -hmm. which we filmed mm -hmm. last night. And uh, we've just been hanging out and uh, having an absolute great time today. We're going to go visit Impact Pro Shop and go do some other wine farm stuff before you guys head back tomorrow. Now, we already have discussed. A potential return trip, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is generally how it goes when people hunt here. They go like, okay, cool. Because something we didn't do on this trip, you didn't shoot any trophy animals. It was right. not a trophy hunt. This was just come to South Africa, experience what it is. Let's hunt like decent animals, nice mature animals, which is what we specifically went after, you know? Yep. And, and being there on the farm and going on the tour and seeing how they cull animals and they are very proactive about sustainable hunting, uh, the meat going back to, no, nothing gets wasted, mm -hmm. right? And there's a population control aspect to it. I, my wife, who's not a hunter, not comfortable with animals being killed, really came away from mm -hmm. it, understanding how this is a positive thing. And like you saw, she even went up and touched the animals mm -hmm. and that was just a huge breakthrough, right? Yeah. And for me, it's just validation that this is, this is just truly a great thing. So if you have dreams of hunting in Africa, I would strongly recommend that you do it mm. because it's going to be unlike anything that you do in the United States. And the food is great here. The driving on the wrong side of the road is great here. I absolutely love that. And uh, the hospitality, the expertise, uh, the culture here, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Awesome. Now, speaking about driving, you also got the opportunity to drive the game viewing mm -hmm. uh, Land Rover, which <laughs> put a massive smile on your face. And I'll oh, yeah. insert some video of that here. <laughs> um, but that was kind of, for me, also a highlight of, because I could just see how much joy you got oh, yeah. of driving us back to the lodge. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's only one road, so no driving on the wrong side of the road. Right. So and I've, I've driven in England before. Okay. With, a diesel manual transmission car, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of times and all that, and I tremendously enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, to, to to be out there, I I'm normally very much a task oriented. I'm about what's happening on my channel. I'm about mm -hmm. how's my business going, and I absolutely just lived every moment there, and I felt so at peace. And you, they call it buck fever, right? Mm -hmm. when you, you, get on an animal and you're looking through the scope and your heart is racing. I didn't feel any of that. Mm. 
it was just what's our range mm -hmm. with dial the dope and I just enjoyed shooting the animals it was like shooting a steel target mm. and to see those clean kills and yeah we were I've never experienced bug fever ever and I think that is because we shoot a lot mm -hmm. um, or maybe people experience it if they you know hunt once a year they shot a few rounds the day before to make mm -hmm. sure the rifle is okay and now all of a sudden you've got to take a living thing's life and you're mm -hmm. unsure about your ability to execute whereas i because we shoot thousands of rounds every year it just for me target dial close mm -hmm. i'm still aware that i'm taking something's life but oh, i'm yeah. not stressing about my ability to deliver the round where it needs to go mm -hmm. i think maybe that's could be a fun sort of thought experiment yep. to to explore later now We've, ex we've chatted about potentially some projects down the line, which mm -hmm. we're excited to, to tell you guys more about as that sort of uh, comes into fruition. Anybody that wants to book a hunt in South Africa and you're unsure, you can email me at info at Impact Pro Shop and just make your subject line like hunting in South Africa and I'd love to give you guys some guidance and help you potentially book a new trip. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about doing another trip potentially here within the next next six months maybe if we're going to do that call but we'll mm -hmm. see if if the scheduling obviously works out yeah um something that i wanted to chat to you about to maybe segue out of your current trip is your journey to where you are now you know you used to be a microsoft employee yep. and now you have this amazing setup you know where i came to visit you not too long ago you're living the dream. How did that transition go? Were you shooting when you were working at Microsoft? Or give mm -hmm. me some background, because this is some, we haven't actually discussed this, how you got into yeah. shooting. Yeah, so I shot as, as a kid. Uh, it started with a 22 with mm -hmm. my dad. And I still remember setting up and shooting that 22 and the smell of the burnt propellant, you know. And I don't think I thought it was a lot of recoil, mm -hmm. but this is the first real proper gun I had shot. Right? Okay. And, and so then I had bought shotguns and in high school and in college, my friends, we got more or less AK-47s and would go up into the hills and shoot, but it was all very casual. Okay. And I didn't shoot for a while. And then it was handgunning that got me back into it actually. Okay. Hiking, wanted a 44 Magnum. And mm -hmm. so I bought a 44 Magnum and I soon realized, you know, young family at home, not a whole lot of extra money. I needed to reload. Okay. And I, that's what really, <laughs> kind of like yourself, I started with the Lee Pro 1000 <laughs> and quickly realized, <laughs> quickly realized. And sorry, that, Lee, <laughs> that product sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the mechanical engineer in me thought, okay, I need to up my game with the, the, mm -hmm. the machinery here. And so, you know, I, analysis paralysis, I'm just agonizing over which reloading press to, to buy. And, and, and I wanted to share some of that consumer insight and information with people. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much that led to, oh, what about reloading for rifles? Mm. And I've got my first center fire rifle for hunting. And then not too long after that, the Ruger Precision Rifle came out. Mm -hmm. So kind of like yourself, that was sort of my first long range rifle, mm -hmm. I guess and had some fun with that. And all the while I'm thinking in the back of my head, I need to build my own rifles, mm -hmm. you know? So I got all geared up, I bought a lathe, I got it all kind of set up and then just scrapped that idea. Okay. And decided I needed a better lathe. So I talked to the Precision Matthews folks and you know, got a brand new lathe that was proper machine and just sort of that experience of lo building the ammunition, building the rifle, building the dope. Mm -hmm and then hitting a target is is so satisfying. So if you have the dream of building your own rifles, I would strongly recommend mm -hmm. going down that path because it is very rewarding and it's not rocket science. There's quite a few things that you really need to be careful about and you need to know about. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe take Gordy Gritter's class or, you know, find a mentor that knows what they're doing to guide you down that path. But it, it's just incredibly rewarding and very practical if you're shooting out barrels mm -hmm. and, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, at which point did you go, okay, because we were having this discussion sort of last night, you know, I come from a finance background and for a while during my career, towards the latter part of my finance career, I freaking hated what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was mm -hmm. driving to work, my mental health was all over the place, I was nauseous in my stomach, like I really hated what I was doing and I came to a realization like, we're here on this little round ball in space yep. for such a small time 
and I don't want to blink and end up being 80 years old and gone like woulda, coulda, shoulda. Mm -hmm. And I resigned and basically almost went bankrupt before this YouTube channel started making money. And I don't know if you guys know that, but I was like one month away from being bankrupt <laughs> while I was building this YouTube channel. And I praise the Lord that everything worked out. So your journey is kind of similar. It really that. is. Yeah. It really is. I think I when I quit Microsoft, you know, I, I couldn't stand the weather, the politics. Where were you area. living at the time? It was Bothell, which is okay. near Seattle, right? So things that were highly bothering me were the traffic, the weather, the corporate politics at Microsoft, and the cost of living and the commute. You know, just the whole thing was really. I, I felt like, you know, I really wanted to find purpose in my work and. The last couple of teams I was on at Microsoft were very much in transition, mm -hmm. and it was very difficult to find meaning and purpose. And I was very strongly feeling the call of the wild as well. You know, mm -hmm. we had our cabin, kind of a weekend place where where you came to visit, at which we now live at, and it was it was just a big dream to be able to live out in the country. Mm -hmm. And so we sold our house. I quit my job. And in fact, our house hadn't quite closed. We were still in escrow mm. when I quit. So oh, wow. if anything went wrong with that home sale, I yeah. would have been in a in, little bit of trouble. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we made the move. And really, for me, being able to put my full-time energy, as I'm sure you found, towards the channel really, really helped me do a lot mm. more. And to be there out where I could shoot and film mm. all in the same location really... Um, really made a huge difference and the, the channel grew in excess of a hundred thousand that was a big opportunity to do more with companies mm. and to have larger influence and you know I've just been kind of continually refining and mm. I guess expanding what I'm doing and just absolutely loving it yeah and now you guys have a team that actually help mm. you knock out more I mean you're doing yeah. more videos in in a week and a half than I do per month which is it's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, we have Tyler who leads our media team. Mm -hmm. We have Kyle who's alongside him and does editing and and film work. Serena, mm -hmm. who's uh, an accomplished shooter herself, writes the articles. Uh, Guy Miner does the hunting mm -hmm. content and some of the more budget-oriented, traditional rifle type stuff. Uh, and then we have Earl down at our storefront where mm -hmm. we have a gunsmithing shop and where we build rifles and and, and that sort of thing. So. The team is expanding. We're expanding mm -hmm. what we're doing. We're, we've started to build custom rifles now. Mm -hmm. We're just at the very start of that journey. You um, did the first one now for the guys from Annealing Made Perfect. Yeah. And uh, I'll see if I can overlay an image of that, but just the presentation. And we were chatting earlier about like the experience with unboxing. And we have the same sort of philosophy with APW. Like when you open it, it's like laser cut foam and it's, yep. you know, it's, it's a highly polished finished yeah. product and it's such a part of the experience and that's something that i think you crushed i haven't seen it with my own eyes but the, <laughs> wow i need it's, one it's pretty cool mm -hmm. you know when you open that case you want either your friends or yourself to have a smile on mm -hmm. your face right and to feel that and you know people want a rifle that i've built yeah. and i can only build so many of them mm -hmm. so these are extremely Exclusive, limited production yeah. yeah but you know over time i really want to expand our gunsmithing because in our area, a lot of the gunsmiths have left. Okay. Because it's not, Washington State is not a good place to mm. do gun business. When we were shooting the Rock Chuck Olympics, uh, a prime example of that was the fact that we had 10 round mags in the pistols, mm -hmm. which is obviously not something that we're used to here. We don't have any mag restrictions in South Africa, by the way. Okay. Nothing. We just run what you run. Right. Drum mags, everything goes. <laughs> but your permitting process is intense. Yes, right? it's a little bit more. Yeah, it's yeah. quite intense. Yeah, but it, I think it's good still. Mm -hmm. I just think the execution of the process is, is right. poor. Uh, it takes way longer than it should, mm -hmm. um, and that's. But there's unfortunately not a hell of a lot we can do. It's a hurry up and wait kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So you know what I would like to do is to offer to the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. precision rifle community. Hey, if you need a new barrel, we can. We're, we have barrels in stock. High quality Bart line, mm. Krieger, Benchmark, whatever it happens to be, and we can chamber your rifle in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And that's down from a year or two for mm. some of the high end gunsmiths. And um, I feel like we can do that, but it's gonna take a real investment yeah. in inventory, and I need to hire a full time gunsmith. You know, there's. Mm. There's a pathway towards that. So right now I'm doing the gunsmithing mm -hmm. work, work myself, which I tremendously enjoy, but there's not enough time to 
really get... It doesn't scale. It does not scale. No. That's why when I was chatting to you about it, I was like, I don't see this really... Like, I don't know why you wanted to tackle that. Obviously, from a mental sort of, it stimulates you, this, you love doing it. But as a business decision, probably like a difficult one. But if you're going to build a team... Absolutely. Yeah, then that's a completely different yep. kettle of fish. And I think this is something, and I take my hat off to you, the way you empower your team... And uh, it's fantastic to sort of have had this business talks with you and, you know, you've been able to build a tremendously successful business, which is complete 180 from, you know, your background True. Um, and the way you want to empower your team and do world-class work. And I'm really inspired by that. And I'm going to implement that sort of into my own businesses because I also have like too many irons in the fire and mm -hmm. like sometimes start something and like, like my store, for example, the store does really good. But we could do, you know, phenomenally better if we spent more time and effort trying to do that. Whereas kind of it's like good enough, but then I need to do this and then I need right. to do this and then I'm going to this trip. And yeah, so it's a little bit difficult. So. And we're both catering to, we're both perfectionists. Mm. And to find someone that can execute at that level, I, I want to say like with Tyler on our team, it's been two years, in excess of two mm. years now. And only now are we, am I able to empower him to do YouTube mm. thumbnails on his own. Mm. And, and I had left for maybe three days. This is a two week trip. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a real step of faith yeah. that that's how you make progress. Mm. And, and like yourself, it empowers me to do different mm. things and still do ultimate reloader and yeah. still be really involved, but just not to have to do everything. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we have quite a busy morning to get to. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little... <laughs> Behind the scenes look, sort of what makes Gavin tick. He's a little bit of a, a update on the South Africa trip. Again, if you want to see this whole thing, it's going to be some awesome video. Hopefully yeah. I filmed it. I can't wait to go through some of the clips because I know there should be some bangers in. And it's going to be really interesting to see how you guys craft the story. Because I know like how I would present this. But you guys, Tyler, will obviously be editing this. So I'm very excited mm -hmm. to see how that comes out. And it was an absolute privilege for me to have you here and host you in my home and it's it's super surreal guys i can't really explain this to you but when i just got into youtube you were the first resource that i watched you know mm. i needed to set up my piece of <laughs> pro 1000 and i was like this guy knows what he's doing and then eventually i was like you can't polish a turd and i threw that thing away and then i bought a dylan 650 which mm -hmm. I got, you you know, I, how to swap the turrets, all those things I learned on your channel and some of the upgrades and how I should configure the kit and all mm -hmm. of those things I learned from you. And then I got a Ruru Precision in 6.5 Creed. And again, you were the resource. So to now, this is all pre me having a channel. So to have you sitting in my house, <laughs> drinking my wine, it's, it's freaking badass. It's been, I, yeah. it's been great. And I can't express to you how grateful I am for the experience that you have helped to unfold over the last week and a half. It's it, an I mean, pleasure. to hunt with you, this is like, now I'm stepping completely into your domain, South African hunting. And I almost didn't realize the magnitude of it while it was happening. Mm -hmm. Only now am I really fully aware of that this is the dream for so many people around the world. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do this and not struggle and wonder about which guide. This mm -hmm. is like straight to the top level. Mm -hmm. And it was such a uh, adventure dense timeline. Yeah. You know, and beautiful sunsets and wonderful food a little bit too much <laughs> a little bit too much this is a south african thing that we tend to yeah to overeat yeah. so so thank you and i think this is just the start of our journey hunting together yeah. and i'm so into it awesome dude thank you very much again thank you. for coming guys subscribe to ultimate reloader if you haven't already leave a comment leave a like uh yeah thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye